some of the better news over the weekend was that Drake's sixth studio album, Certified Lover Boy, finally did drop. It finally ended up coming out, and the debates around it have been striking, striking debates about it. Um, of course, I was more intrigued at the idea that people were comparing Certified Lover Boy to Donda, or that people were very harsh about Donda in the beginning but then we're also very harsh and flipping about certified love but it just made me think about the hypocrisy in fan bases it made me think about people's tendencies to want to just jump out the window and be the first person to call something trash and stuff and it just kind of run, drummed home the idea that most people aren't really objective when it comes to art or stuff that they consume because I think for the most part we haven't really oh no maybe we are objective and we also don't really have the it feels like most people don't have the the ability to dissect or to describe why they like something because people spend so much time shitting on stuff online that's my fear I have a theory people don't really have a way of displaying how they like something so they even say something it's so binary it's very trash or this is the greatest of all time go or trash go or trash I mean that's uh, that's what it kind of feels like fire emoji or trash bag or trash or trash bin emoji there's no real in between and I feel like music albums in general have always been like that there's rarely you know that's why the great albums are the great albums because there's rarely a lot of those great albums where they're just solid from the front to the back they're usually elements that you like some bass that you don't like maybe this artist going direction in sound that you just not really vibing with maybe they've done something in the public life that just doesn't really vibe with you either there's things that happen that would make you that kind of affect your listening experience when it comes to an album when it finally does come out and i think drake is basically suffering from that right he's had 10 years of unparalleled success where he's the kind of main guy that everyone's kind of aiming and sniping for he's the guy that everyone's waiting to drop he's the guy that everyone waits to drop um he's the one that all the fans want to see live shows are packed he sells out these places venues arenas blah 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 he is the hot ticket item he is the number one supreme you know hip-hop artist at the moment right so it's it's it's, it's fairly it's to be expected people would be looking at his album thinking okay this is where you have to show and prove us you are who you are people are saying that he has to have a he has, doesn't have a what do you call it um doesn't have a classic album so he has to really come with one blah 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 so there's a lot of pressure put on the back of this album when it did eventually drop but one thing that i did quickly notice was that the same people that were saying donda was shit were then immediately saying surf i love boy is really good and i just couldn't get it in my head because from what i listened to what i heard was one artist in kanye who's consistently pushing the envelope, trying to at least make each of his albums sound completely different because he's going for a completely different sounds. He's trying to do something completely different to what Drake is trying to do, right? It's not better, it's not worse, but he's trying to do different things. But as an artist, in terms of listening to an album and saying whether or not this is good or bad, it's very difficult to say Donda shit and in Surf I Love Boy is awesome. Because if anything, the Kanye West album is a better representation of what an album maybe should sound like, if that makes sense, in terms of it being more of an exploration in sound, maybe marking a time in history. You know, the fact that Kanye is now basically a born again Christian, he's gone through what he's gone through with the politics and whatnot. This album is a good encapsulation of his many breakdowns and breakthroughs that you're basically going to get, right? Just Donna represents everything that we've known about Kanye from maybe what was the last album? Was it Yay or whatever it was? Until now, this has been a good summation of what's happened in those what last 18 two years or whatever that's happened in between um so if i love a boy if anything is an extension of what drake always does it may not be a good summation of what he's get up to in the last year or so maybe a, with the exception of a few tracks in the album where he gets a look very very personal and in-depth but overall in terms of how it sounds it probably sounds like more of what you expect the drake album to sound like than anything else so it's hard to say that is much better than donda again i think people should just enjoy both albums this comparing of artists and whatnot is lame but it's just difficult to listen to somebody who says donda is um shit but surf Boy is the best thing since last spread it's just very difficult it's somewhere in between but that being as that aside i still maintain what i've said previously even though i'm not the fan of the entire project overall there's a lot of skips in this for me i still think overall it's probably drake's best cohesive album project if that makes sense it's probably drake's best album even though for me i think there's a lot of skips why do i say that because i feel like in terms of sounds in terms of textures, in terms of sonics, whatever you want to describe it as, it's probably the most cohesive I've heard him sound, knitted together. The sequencing is perfect. The track selection, the production is just out of this world. It sounds expensive. It sounds lush. It sounds layered. It sounds very OVO, right? It's probably a, the best 
probably a representation of what OVO sound is actually really about. It sounds like one, I think when I first heard it, it's, to me it sounded like one long OVO mix, which was maybe what they were trying to go for. But there was real no standout kind of like get out of your seat moments, which you usually do get with a Drake. Think of his previous albums, some of the standout tracks. Maybe he's just not in that space anymore. Or maybe it's hard to make that track when you're in COVID. I think I remember hearing an interview with Skepto he says something on the lines of like oh when everyone's thinking that he wrote something about he retired you think he was just saying no I'm just not going to be writing anything now I think he said everything that's coming out will be stuff that I've made in 2019 but I'm not going to be creating anything now because the vibes are just off in it the vibes are off it's hard to make bangers um, when you're all stuck at home and nothing to do and the world's you know in disarray so when the world reopens up again maybe he can get back to the studio and be able to kind of make those jump out your seat bangers so maybe this is why there is no real kind of edge of your seat moment on this album with Drake it's all kind of really kind of you know it kind of you, you, you pop in your head you can play in the cars you're whipping around or you're on a run or you're doing your little you know you're doing your your um, your life admin stuff on a weekend it's a great accompaniment that way because you don't really need to change and run to a track to skip it but for me I did find there's a lot of fillers in it overall together but again my own personal opinion um, so let's scroll down to track this and point out some of my favourite tracks that I really enjoyed um, of course um, in the bible I thought was absolutely stupendous this. I thought Lil Durk's verse was 16 bars way too short I thought Givian was amazing towards the end of it I thought Drake's opening bar like the slur on it I'm not sure if that was on purpose it kind of sounded like he was leaned out and stuff like was just incredible the fact that he came in like on a half a beat right okay 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 da, 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 da. oh it was just like yeah amazing 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 obviously Lil Durk shouting out his girl and there was sick I thought Love All was really awesome um, Jay-Z pondering and contemplating why people are surprised that he's not friends with somebody that tried to kill him is really funny when you think about the fact that he's like bemused he's bewildered why people think it's weird for him not to be friends with that guy I thought that track was absolutely sick um, way too sexy of course um, sampling Red Rod St the legendary Rod Stewart song was amazing to hear that Rod Stewart song I played in sets in bars and stuff where I've been DJing and it's always gone off right it's always going off um, what else I love um, the end too deep song oddly enough Enough. I think I've sold somebody else. This might be actually the best f future track on here, or the best future, uh, the best future feature, or the best feature, the best track featuring future on the track. Um, people would say it's too sexy, but I think this into deep might be one of the best standout moments. I think for that one, um, I'm going to say another one that was one of my favorites. Uh, Fountains by featuring Temp was really good. Get along better is good too. The track with um, Rick Ross and Lil Wayne, not really a fan at all. I think for Lil Wayne and Rick Ross collaborations, it was fairly lack lackluster. For Rick Ross collaborations specifically, it was fairly lackluster. Um, they've done far better collabs in the past, but a real big standout is it Jerome Braithwaite. Isn't that party next door, right? It is. Um, a, a real standout for me was Fucking Fans, one of the last tracks towards the end. Obviously, Remorse is really cool, but Fucking Fans, I thought was that was peak Drake. That was incredible to hear. To me, I mean, really, really incredible to hear. Um, I guess maybe the one of the things I was thinking about it, like, think of a loosely, or think of like a throwaway track like Wu Tang Forever. Was there a moment as strong as Wu Tang Forever on this album? There really wasn't, innit? I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's just hard to create something at this in this era of that sort of likeness right now or maybe he's just not there where he is where he was at when he made Wu-Tang Forever I'm not too sure but that didn't even exist on here so if anything there's about five tracks on here that I love the rest you know I could you know I could maybe you know I'm not that bothered about don't get me wrong but they're not like you know trash worthy um you know album cuts i don't think so in my personal opinion obviously the opening track champagne poetry is banging i think if anything champagne poetry was a big honey um honey dick right because that made you think you were going to get one album and then when it started playing it was like you know it kind of meandered out but i thought champagne poetry was an incredibly good um album intro um but again this does, stuff doesn't matter because in the, the day the numbers speak for themselves in it the numbers absolutely speak for themselves. They're expecting, they're expecting this guy, right? OVO, Drake, <laughs> to sell supposedly anywhere between 575,000 and 625K first week. Usually these are like pop star numbers, right? These are like what, you know, the Adele's and the, you know, what you call it, Taylor Swift's and stuff get, which makes sense, right? Because they're, you know, Caucasian ladies that, that sing pink, sorry, that sing, um, that sing, that sing uh, pop music. So for sure, most people are going to be into that kind of thing. So it makes complete sense why those why those kind of vibes would be a lot more felt than others. But 
for Drake to make the music that he makes, talking about the nonsense that he's talking about, right? And the album he's talking about him, you know, telling girls that he's a lesbian too when they when they say they're lesbians, like really cringy bars for somebody who's like, you know, in their thirties with a kid. You know, it's not really cute anymore. I get it, but the fact that people still love this guy to that extent that they'd buy six hundred and twenty five thousand copies of this record first week is just wild absolutely insane i'm sure all the the hype and the beef and stuff with kanye maybe added to it but still man this guy's star power is just on another level it really is so it doesn't actually matter what you think of the album because sooner rather than later if it's good music you're going to like it towards the end because it's just going to keep banging it in your ear until you love it and i think in general having now listened to it over a few days it's still not as bad as think people are making it seem as us i think people thought they were going to get one thing and it wasn't that but i don't think it's as bad as they're making it seem as it's still a pretty solid project maybe one of the better projects that came out this year maybe compared to again Kanye's artistry it maybe it's not up there in terms of artistry but I just don't think they're the same artist I think in an ideal world they'd be friends and they'd make amazing music together because where Kanye is maybe an expert an expert in terms of art and in terms of exploring new sounds in the way they deliver in terms of how they execute things maybe Drake is an expert and a wordsmith and a flipping savant when it comes to putting words together when it comes to creating hooks when it comes to creating moments on a track like he knows what he's doing so Imagine those two guys together in the studio going off each other, trying to outdo one another as well, maybe slightly. Imagine how amazing that album or that mixtape would be. It would be sensational, but we're never going to get that, unfortunately, because they absolutely hate each other's guts, which is, again, understandable. But, um, yeah, I thought the Drake album was decent. Um, Certified Lover Boy, again, I still think it's one of his better albums, but for me, it still isn't my favorite. It still isn't that great, I think, overall. I think there's not a lot of standout tracks. There's maybe five, and five out of, what, 21 is just not enough, um, in my opinion, for a Drake album to be good. But still, the fact that he was able to put out such work back-to-back um, the fact that most of these albums for the most part are pretty solid and this is maybe one of the most ones you know people are a little bit off kilter with says a lot about his level of penmanship so you know it doesn't really matter who really cares I just wish people will just enjoy everyone's music um, you know independently of having to cast the other one that's what I'd hope but again one can only hope